What is going on you guys? Welcome back to my channel, Pokey Live here. Today's video is going to be something that I actually had so much fun making. It's just a bunch of random facts that I think everyone should know when you play Animal Crossing New Horizons. I mean, whether you've been playing for years, yes, this game has been out since 2020, or you're new to the game, this video is definitely for you because I touch on a lot of points that I feel like some are rather obvious, but some might not be. And I think everyone could benefit from learning more about this game as I would say it is a pretty large game and there are thousands of facts. I mean, it was so overwhelming picking just a few for this video, but I think I picked some good ones. So I'm super, super excited for this. Again, I had so much fun making this. I am just totally obsessed with this game. So if you are starting out, I felt like this is the most appropriate beginning to this video. This is so important because one thing I did not know, and literally I made this mistake, you cannot change the resident center. So this is the resident center here. I always call it the city center. It's just the heart of your island. Really, it just, it has most of your activity with other villagers and you have Tom Nook and you have just a lot going on here but you cannot move it along with the airport those are the only two buildings that you can never move so please guys make sure you pick a map that makes sense to you because you cannot change your map yes you can make a ton of changes as far as rivers and stuff and and water and cliffs and all that but you cannot change your resident center or your airport so please pick accordingly where you place them next up i want you guys to always make sure that you are accessing the abd machine which is the automatic bell dispenser machine you will get nook miles daily and trust me they help you early on in the game so make sure you're always getting those next is your money it does grow interest so if you're ever seeing this bank of nook in your mailbox that's just to show you what your money grows i think it's really cute it's like real life when your money grows interest i think they did a really good job with that but yeah make sure you're always getting those miles so just log on to it once a day also don't forget to check out your special items these are going to be your seasonal items that you know anything like holidays and things like that you can get specific items for those days and holidays so always check those out you can place an order you can send them as a gift i just don't want you guys to miss out on those really cool items also while we're in the topic of buying on the abd machine um one really cool thing is buying a mario pipe they are five thousand bells but they are worth it because I think a lot of people use them really just because they look cool and if you're a Mario fan, why not? But I use them to actually travel. So basically my house is the furthest place on my island from really everything, my airport, my residence center. So I put the other pipe closer to my airport so that I can just get there easily and it's worked for me. I mean, you can definitely use it as decor or you can use it just to travel from A to B like I do, but use it however you'd like to. This game is totally up to you how you want to play it. Next up, I think that it is super important that you are talking to your island residents here. I mean, personally, I like to go out and find my own. So I brought them here. They did not ask to be here. So sometimes they just get sad when you don't talk to them. So I always like to say it's really good just to engage with them. And sometimes they will also give you presents. Of course, while making this video, none of mine, I have some crankier villagers right now, but none of them gave me any presents, but sometimes they will. And that's again, another reason why I think you should talk to them. Not always the greatest gifts, but it's just a nice little gesture. So make sure you're keeping everyone happy, unless of course you want them to move away. And again, some of them are just kind of cranky. Also, speaking of those seasonal items, I got an April Fool's Day whoopee cushion. Yes, it does make a whoopee cushion sound. So just a funny little fact. So always check your seasonal items because you can get some fun things. 
So next up, speaking of sending gifts, you can actually go into the airport and you can send some gifts. But first, I actually never noticed that there's a little sign here that says items that you're not allowed to bring on flight with you. Just a cute little quirky thing. But if you go to the right, you'll see this little envelope stand and you can send a letter to any of your friends. You can send it to your future self, a resident. And I like that it is super customizable. You actually have a pretty good amount of options of envelopes and you can just go through these. I just picked one quickly and I'm just going to send it over to my cousin because she is friends with me on here. Uh, so I just wrote miss you cousin and then you can also attach a gift so if you didn't know about this now you do it, I actually didn't learn about it I think until I started streaming but that is how you send gifts to people any of your friends again your future self I've never done that before but um, I am kind of super curious about it so just a fun little spin to the game it is online so you do go through like the online process, but it is super quick with Oroville and it's just fun to send. Especially if you have extra items, you can just send them to your friends. So sticking with the mail theme, one thing that so many players in Animal Crossing do not know is that you can move your mailbox. It is not attached to your home. It's a huge misconception. I thought that at first too, but you can put it anywhere on your island and you will get mail. It will work accordingly. Nothing is going to happen. So play around with it. It's just a cool little customizable feature that I think is nice. So roaches, yes, the season change in this game is kind of intense. And once you get them, you're just kind of prone to them, but you can just run them over and they go away. Um, but this is a great way in your home just to access your storage. It really is the only way to access any type of storage to put things in, take them out until you get a storage shed, which I am so grateful that I have a couple on my island. So again, the shed just makes it so you don't have to go into your home. You can just access the shed. You can put things away. You can take things out and also utilize them in other areas. Like again, my house is the furthest place on my island. So I have a couple sheds throughout that are just more convenient. That way I don't constantly have to run to my house. So it's just an easier way to be able to put things away and take things out. So I highly recommend utilizing storage sheds in this game. And you can also customize the color. So next up, rocks. You always want to be checking your rocks every single day. So just smashing them with an ax. You'll be able to get materials so that you can do some DIYs. You can make some cool things. You do get clay, stone, iron nuggets, sometimes gold nuggets. You get a lot of good stuff that you absolutely need in the game to craft specific items. But I want to also just touch on if you eat a piece of fruit, please be careful because if you smash that rock, it will completely shatter. And trust me, guys, I did this so many times in my early stages of this game. And yes, your rocks do respawn, but you need them for those materials. So please be careful doing that. And as you can see, if you go to your DIYs, you can see all the items that you need. So you do need to utilize those rocks quite often. So that is why I emphasize don't smash them if you've eaten fruit because they will all break. But uh, even if you don't need to craft anything, just do Selling them is great for bells early on in the game. Those iron nuggets give you a good amount. So if you're checking those rocks every single day and you're getting a, you know, a good amount of iron nuggets, you will make you will make some money. So that's always good to know. And also you might even get some gold nuggets and they do add up. As you can see, 30 gold nuggets is 240,000 bells in this game. That is so much. So please make sure you are utilizing those rocks. Next up, we got trees. So it's going to be very similar. If you eat a piece of fruit, um, as you can see, I have that one out of 10. You can eat up to 10 pieces. I do have a video on the fruit in Animal Crossing, so please check that out. But if you do eat a piece, you can dig up trees whole. This is a great way to preserve a tree and just move it if you don't like where it is. I cannot emphasize that enough to please don't just take down your trees with your axe. Dig them up. It is so much better. 
So speaking of trees, if you see this little glowing thing out of the ground, yes, it is bells. Please dig it up, but be careful. Don't just cover that hole. You can actually move some more bells and you can make a money tree. A lot of people don't know that you can add money to it and you do have to make sure you bury it right in that glowing hole or else it will not work. And then when you come back in a couple days, you will have your money tree and over time it will just give you three times the amount that you put in. So each one of those little things is going to be 10,000 bells, which is awesome. And while we're on the topic of digging things up, make sure you always dig up your fossils and you check with blathers and you get them assessed because we are trying to finish the museum. It is, I would say, the most important goal in this game. It's such an awesome feature here. I mean, they just did such an amazing job in this museum. So make sure you're always assessing your fossils. Even if, you know, you have a ton of them, you think you're nearing the end, you want to finish that exhibit. And I hate to, to be the one to tell you, but even when you finish the fossils like I have, you still get them throughout your island. It is a good way to make money and you do make more money if you um, assess them and then you go to sell them. So just a fun fact for you guys, I want, you know, you just to be getting the absolute most you can. So always assess them. And as you can see here, this is the fossil exhibit i don't go in here too much but it is really really cool i i will say they just did such a great job with it i think all the exhibits in the museum are so detailed and thought out and just absolutely beautiful so definitely make sure you are doing the fossil part i know it can be tedious but it is worth it when you finish it. And sometimes they actually do events too, which is so random. So just pop in there and see if there's anything going on because you never know. Alrighty, so if you get this prompt with Isabel when you first sign into the game, there's a very good chance you got Mr. Gulliver here who is passed out. He is kind of like the drunken guy on the beach who has no idea what happened. You can grab a net and you can just whack him over the head. I like to do it. It wakes him up and it is kind of funny, honestly. I, I do it and after a few times... He will get up and you just have to be patient and keep doing it. Again, he is a little intoxicated, so patience, guys. But once he is up, he will start talking and you will get a hint of he's basically he's missing his communicator and you have to find all five pieces of it. It's either going to be in the sand or in the ocean and he will give you a hint. So just make sure you read this dialogue so that you know where to look. In this case, it was the sand, as you'll see here, probably buried somewhere in the sand. So you have to basically just run around on the same side of the beach that he's on. It's not going to be on any of the other beaches. It's going to be right around where he is. And these fragments will look exactly like clams buried in the sand. So just be careful um, if you see something and you're like, oh, it's a clam. It probably is actually the communicator. It's the same as like if they're in the ocean, it will look like a sea item, which you'll see later on in this video. But just dig up anything that resembles a clam with that little water shooting out. Once you have all five, you can give them to him. His communicator will work now. He'll have all his parts and he'll call for help and he will finally get off of your island. He is kind of frustrating, but I promise he's actually a pretty cool character. I've invited him to my coffee shop um, via Amiibo cards. So don't hate on Gulliver. You just got to get him what he needs. So next up, let's get into fishing. So it's said that if you run around, obviously you're going to scare away your fish, but this is kind of a, a method to catching some of the larger fish, like the more rare fish. So if you run around super quick, you will scare off the smaller fish. I don't know how true that is, but um, I like to use bait, honestly, when trying to catch rare fish and it's just digging up one clam, going to a workbench and you can craft a bunch of bait. I suggest doing it in large batches. But one thing that I want to tell you guys is that if you throw in bait and you don't like the size fish that you see, you can just keep 
redoing it you don't have to literally catch the fish and then do the bait you can just keep throwing bait in and the fish will spawn and it will change per every single time you do it i just kept getting a small fish with this try so i'm just going to catch it and it's a clown fish super cute um but yeah definitely bait and you know looking up when to catch those rare fish i mean over time you will start to be able to recognize the shadows in the water so it's a nice feature that you can just keep respawning fish with bait and it looks like i got a red snapper here pretty cool and it's a good way to make money i mean that's how i made most of my money between just collecting fruit and fishing that was the bulk of it um, so fishing is definitely worth it and you get to add to your Critterpedia and your museum and if you're lucky you might get CJ who is the fish guy if you love fishing in the game which I think it's a lot of people's favorite thing you can do a fish tournament I am not going to do one in this video but it is super fun so if he is on your island go up and chat with him and you can do a little challenge there super fun um he can also make you a collectible which this is actually my first time ever doing so if you skip over the challenge you can select make me a collectible and you do need three of the same fish so if you do want one of the rare fish like some kind of shark and or fish uh things like that it, it will be trickier i'm just going to go catch something super simple get three of them and come back and i ended up getting three little seahorse so i'm going to have a seahorse collectible um again it's my first time doing it We're, we all learn something new here so and i love his little pictures i think they are so adorable how he does that he's a really cool character and i know i say that about pretty much everyone but he honestly really is a cool character and once you get a wetsuit make sure you throw it on and you take a dive into the ocean and you start looking for all of those sea items the way to do it is you just plunge down uh, you will see those little bubbles always out of the water that is where the item's going to be. Some of them like crabs and things like that will run so you do have to hold your breath underwater and chase them. But this is important because you're trying to finish this ocean sea creature part in your Critterpedia. I'm only missing a few honestly I'd have to check what they are but it will show you new things that you caught like I caught this spider crab super huge I and it ran so fast guys I'm not even joking when I say that but again like it, this is great because it shows you you know when you can catch them um, some information especially if you go into your museum you can get info there but I love catching things in the ocean I think it is I almost like it more than fishing to be honest and sometimes I just go so far out. It's pretty hard to get lost, but if you do, there is a rescue service. There is a small fee. It is, I believe, 50 nook miles. You'll see it pop up on the screen. But if you do just go really far out in the ocean, I've done it before where you feel, okay, so it's 100 miles uh, per rescue. I was close. Um, but sometimes you just swim so far and you just can't get back and it feels like it's never ending. So you can always use the rescue service and you can select where you want to be rescued to. I just picked my home. I think it's a good place to end. So it's just a service that I think some people probably don't know exists. So use it if you're lost so that's gonna be it for this video guys again it, it was hard picking a few i'm gonna be doing more of these videos because there's so much to this game but i hope you guys learned something in this video whether you have a lot of experience playing the game or you're just starting out hopefully this video was super informative and as always, don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other content. I have tons of other tutorials, videos, live streams, and so much more. And I will see you guys on the next one.